This week we finish up our PDF report by adding some maps. Welcome to another MapPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week we're going to wrap up exploring FPDF and how to use it to make reports by creating some maps with matplotlib, so we're going to get some nice matplotlib cardipi review. And we'll insert those images that we make into our PDF report, including a page break, and that should be a complete current report from the NDBC. All right, so just to remind ourselves, we're importing the FPDF object, and we're creating a class based on the FPDF class, defining a header and a footer for our page styling. From Siphon Simple Web Service, we're importing the NDBC class and date time. We're getting the latest observations from the NDBC, and we can compute some statistics on those. And then lastly, we're using FPDF to actually create a table that contains the statistics. So that's what we've done in the last two weeks. Now we're going to go up here above where we're writing our PDF and generate some maps with matplotlib. So the first thing is going to be a bunch of imports. We're going to import cardipi.crs as ccrs. Import cardipi dot feature as C feature matplotlib dot pyplot as plt then we're going to use the station plot model and that comes from metpy dot plots we're going to import station plot we're going to need to do a little bit of math to get wind components because we have speeds and directions that's going to live in metpy.calc. Import metpy.calc as mpcalc. For metpy.units, we're going to import the unit registry, units. And that should give us all of the tools we need to make these maps. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a map with a regular station plot model. I'm going to define a projection. And we're going to use the Lambert Conic Conformal. The central latitude is going to be 45. The central longitude, I will use minus 100. And for standard parallels, 30 and 60. I'm going to create my figure object using plot.figure. I'm going to set the fig size to be 17 by 11. Remember, that's whatever units are set in your matplotlib RC file. I'm going to create an axes instance on that and specify my projection as proj, my Lambert conformal projection. Draw some coastlines with 1 to 50 million resolution. And we want to make sure those have a black edge color. And I'm going to set my map extent minus 125 to minus 70 in longitude and from 25 to 50 in latitude. And since those are in lat and long values, not in Lambert conic conformal coordinates, we need to specify a projection, which is black curry. It's always a good idea before we start adding data to make sure our map works and that it's the map we expect. So here I do have a coastline outline. It's the region I expect, roughly CONUS, and I don't see anything that I want to change on my base map. So now we're ready to start our station plot. The station plot is going to equal an instance of the station plot class. It is on our axis AX. We 
get our longitude values, our latitude values. I'm going to turn clipping on. And we're going to specify that our transform again is plot Cree. These are latitude and longitude. And we'll use a font size of 12. Now on that station plot, we're going to use plot parameter in the northwest quadrant of the station plot. I want to use the air temperature variable. I'll get the values from that data series. In other words, just give me the NumPy array. And for the color, we'll set that to be tab red. Now I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to put something in the northwest, the southwest, the southeast, and the northeast. Okay, so in the southwest quadrant, we're going to put dew point. This is pretty standard. For that color, we'll make it tab green. In the southeast quadrant, we're going to put the water temperature. Water temperature. And I'll make that tab blue. And in the northeast, we're going to put the atmospheric pressure. Unlike a lot of variable names that specify at sea level, we don't have to worry about that here. They just call it pressure because it's on a buoy, so it is by definition at sea level. The color for that, we'll use black text. Now we are going to specify a formatter. Remember the traditional station plot format? And we've gone over this in a previous MetPy Monday. Uh, it's out there for you to review if you need a, a refresher on Lambda functions. But this is going to give us that classic three digit format that we're used to when we're looking at station plots. Okay, so that's our four quadrants around the center of the station plot. We probably want to add wind, so we're going to use a plot barb. And for that, we're going to need U wind, which we don't have yet, and V wind. So now we need to calculate those, but let's go ahead and finish up our plotting code here. I'm going to save this as conusmap.png. All right, so let's add a cell up here, and we're going to calculate U and V wind. So U wind, V wind. From metpy.calc, we're going to use the wind components function. The wind speed dot values, and we're going to multiply by units meters per second, because this calculation does require units. Same with the wind direction. And let's run our plot cell now. Well, our plot worked. We have lots of stations, but the problem is we have too many. We can't see what's going on. So to do that, we need to use the reduce point density function. And to do that, we need to make sure that we transform our values into map coordinates. So again, we're going to add a couple of cells here. Our point locations, we're going to use our proj.transform points. We're in Plat Curie, and we have longitude, values, 
latitude values and that will give us our point locations transformed into map coordinates. Now we're going to use the reduce point density function to subset our data frame in pcalc reduce point density provide our point locations and a separation value 100,000. Now when we make our plot we have fewer stations and we can actually read most of the values now but still get an idea of generally what's happening. We see northerly winds and more southeasterly winds here so there's clearly something going on. We've got westerlies out here on the east coast. So there's our first map. I want to go ahead and create a second map while we're here that uses the wave direction data. I'm going to go ahead and get the latest observations again. So NDBC dot latest, so I have all of my data again, not just the subset data. U wave direction, V wave direction. I'm going to use mpcalc.wind again, even though these are wave directions. Now remember mpcalc.wind components take speed and direction. We don't really have wave speed in the buoy data. We just have a dominant wave direction. So I'm going to just pick a speed to scale my arrows. I'm going to say 10 times units meters per second. Doesn't really matter here. And then dominant wave direction dot values times units dot degrees. So now we've calculated U and V dominant wave direction components. Create a figure. Same size, just to make life simple. 17 by 11. Create our axes. We'll reuse our proj variable from before. Put our coastlines back on with the same 1 to 50 million resolution, black edge color. Set the extent. Now I'm going to scatter longitude, latitude. I'm going to color by the water temperature. Don't forget to specify a transform. These are in Plat Curry. I'm going to use the cool warm color map. That seems appropriate for a water temperature plot. I'm going to use quiver to create arrows or vectors. They start at the longitude latitude coordinates. They have the U wave and V wave components for our dominant wave direction. Their transform again, Plat Curry. And finally, we call plot.savefig. We're going to call this conus vectors.png. And there we go. We can see that not many stations report dominant wave direction. Uh, some report water temperature, not nearly all the ones that we had before, though. This is why I wanted to go get all the data, because I knew that we were throwing away a lot of stations that had this relatively rare parameter. But we can see that we've got uh, a lot of tide going, our dominant wave direction going out to the east, especially over here on the, the west coast. And then we've got... Uh, some easterly flow here in the Gulf, and westerly dominant wave directions down here towards the tip of Florida. Okay, so now we need to put these in our PDF report. I'm going to use the PDF set XY to set my 
position of where I'm going to be working. 0 and 120. We use the image call and specify the path to the image. We can specify an x and y position and a width and height. If we don't specify, it's going to put it wherever our cursor currently is. And if you don't specify both a width and height, it will keep the aspect ratio of whatever you don't set. So if I set the width to be 200, it will auto scale the height for me. I'm going to use the add page method. Again, we're going to set XY 0 and 60 this time. This time we're going to put the conus vectors png map. Set width to be 200 again. That's all there is to add these images. But I notice as I'm here working on this code, there are some repeated things. Now I could get fancy and maybe combine all five of these lines and uh, one, two, three, four, maybe five or even six of these lines with some little more complicated code. But I'm just going to do a quick cleanup here. It takes just a minute, and when you're seeing something, that's the time to fix it. So for label and my list of mean, min, max, we're going to replace these three lines with these two. You say, well, we only saved a line of code. What's the advantage? Well, I could continue to add to this list and save more and more lines of code if I want to put more statistics on here. Also, water level above mean, we didn't have many stations reporting that, so I'm going to remove it from my report. We're going to do a similar trick down here. And we're going to call it for stat in our stats of mean, min, max. stat there and remove these lines. Now I could have gotten a little fancier because we we're wrapping to the next line position here and encoded that somehow or said if it's the last one uh, using enumerate but this is again just a simple quick fix up and we're not going to get too elaborate because we probably aren't going to add that many more variables to this table. So now we can run that and our PDF report is generated and ready for us. And here it is. We've got our table. There's our inserted image. Notice our page footer is working great. And here is the vector image. Now of course we could add some captions to these, do regional graphics. You could take this as far as you want. FPDF, Matplotlib, and tools such as Siphon and MetPy make it very easy to create these real-time reports in an automated way. So you can create them in a snap, uh, have them done automatically, do them on demand, whatever is easiest for your research and your project. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.